Shalom. Welcome to our Shabbat uh, class. Uh, we're very excited for today. We already uh, started opening up with some good questions. Um, and so, as always, we meet Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturday um, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it over to the host, Leonard. How's it going? Oh, how you doing? Shalom, shalom, shalom. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, um, Esther and Mordecai and uh, Artaxerxes, the king, uh, the Persian king. And so, uh, I'm sorry, I was, uh, I was just wanted, I wanted to. The reason I went here was to, uh, I wanted to shed a light on a lot of some stuff that was, I think that uh, uh, people been reading over and not really understanding. So. Uh, without further ado, we can start it. Uh, okay, the, the book of Esther, uh, it's, uh, historical setting uh, covers a period of 10 years, uh, which is uh, the reign of uh, Artaxerxes uh, the first. And uh, his name, he got two, he, he just like uh, Kaniah, he got like three different names. He has, his name is Aris, which is uh, Hebrew, it's the same king, you know, a lot of people would think it's like a different king, but it's it's the same king. Then it's uh it's, it's Exodus, which is Greek. So these are Aris, Aris, and Artaxerxes and Xerxes is the same person. Mm, okay, and he's the same king that married Esther. And uh, he and uh, Artaxerxes is the same king that uh gave Nehemiah all the leads to go to uh, Jerusalem uh, to help uh, Ezra and uh, Zubel uh, rebuild the temple. So you got, so you got this, all this happening around the same time. And uh, another thing is that um, when we talk about the, about the wicked scribe, which is, uh, you know, it has, you know, he had to be identified and we got to talk about him because of, uh, right, we have the book of Esther, which, uh, it's not actually the name of the book. The actual name of the book is the book of Mordecai. Uh, it's about, uh, the book is about Mordecai being raised up uh, to second in charge, uh, just as Daniel in Babylon was raised up to second in charge, and Joseph was raised up uh, by the Lord in Egypt. Uh, so uh, Esther, Esther played a role in it. She assisted in, uh, in helping Mordecai to, to get to uh, where he was at. So, uh, and, and verses that start to show that, you know, is, is one of the verses is uh, Esther 9 and uh, 9 verse 20. It says, uh, 9 and 20 says, you know, this, this, this shall light on, on, on what, what the name of the book really is. Uh, it says, and Mordecai wrote these things. And sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the providence of, the king, uh, of King Aarus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them that they may they should keep the 14th day of the month, Adar, and the 15th day of the same year. So we see that Mordecai was doing the writing. And then uh, after one and three, no, uh, yeah, let me see. Uh, yeah, that's the one and three. Let me see what this says. Uh, it says, in the third year of the reign, he made a feast unto all the providence and servants and power, Persian, Median, nobles and providence. Okay, well, I want to go to uh, Esther 1 and 1 to show, show you that uh, this guy, A.R., is, is, is because it's, it's important to understand who he is, that uh, verse 1 says, Esther 1 and 1 says, Now it came to pass in the days of A.R., let's say, uh, from India, I mean, he says, A.R. was reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over 107 provinces, uh, 100, uh, 107 and 20 provinces, that in those days, and King Aris sat on the throne of his kingdom, 
which was in Susa in the palace. And so if you go to Nehemiah, chapter 2, it says, chapter 2, uh, verse 1 says, And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Aarus, the king that was before him, and I took up my wine and gave it unto to the king. Now I had been four times sad in his presence. So it's the same king that's, uh, you know, uh, Aarus and uh, uh, Artaxerxes is the same person. You know, you have to understand that. And so, so uh, one of the, another thing that I wanted to uh, shine a light on was that the Most High uh, said that uh, uh, he had chose Cyrus to be his servant. And so we know that Cyrus was a wicked man, but but the Most High chose him. And so you say, well, what are you talking about? And uh, and and how can you how can that how can you uh, confirm that? Well, from 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 the from the uh, uh, other classes and studies that we've been we've been dealing with, for example, we understand that you know you got uh, uh, seven days, six days you work, seven days you uh, rest. So it's seven days. The most I deal with seven. So that's a sign. When you start seeing all these sevens around the place, you know that you know even though this person may be wicked, they're dealing with the most high some kind of way. They, they, they've seen some or, or they, they, they read some or, or, or probably just shine a light on some for them because they, they're dealing with him. So I want to give you some examples of that in, a, in a A.R.'s kingdom. If you go to Esther 1 and 10, okay, after one team, we see that uh, this is when uh, uh, what brought about all the drama in uh, Art of kingdom was that his, uh, his queen, uh, Vesta, refused to obey him, which was, uh, which was uh, uh, a terrible, terrible thing for a queen to do. So, so they had to get rid of her, and, uh, and, and therefore he needed another uh, queen to replace him. And that's what brought the story of Esther about. But on, 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 uh, after 1 and 10, it says, On the seventh, seventh, seventh day, when the heart of the king was met, married with wine, he commanded uh, Miriam, Vista, Harbana, I can't say his name, I'm butchering him, Vida, and Abadah, Zaka, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served the presence of Ayala. So, so he had seven men. Continuously in his presence, the same the Most High. He got these seven angels continuously in his presence, and so so this way he got a lot of his uh, counseling from. So you get on, you go down to thirteen, and then said then then the king said uh, to the wise men which knew the times, uh, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And fourteen, and the next unto him was Carsena. Sheetha, Adama, Tarshish, Marys, Marcina, and, and Melchim, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which sat first in the kingdom. So he got seven princes around him, and he got seven chamberlains around him. And so uh, you go to um, go to Esther two and nine. And so when when when, the, when the, uh, uh, he sent his men, the men were sent out to, to gather all the virgins in his kingdom for him to uh, to, uh, to look at to find a wife, a queen, to find a queen. He uh, go to verse nine and says, "I'm gonna start at verse eight. So it came to pass when the king, king's commandment and his uh, decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together under a Shushan, the palace. To the custody of he got that Esther was brought also into the king's house to the custody of uh, Diga, keeper of the, of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her things for purification with such things as, as belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meant to be which were meet, meet to be given to her out of the king's house. And, and, her, and he preferred her as her maid 
which is the best place of the house of the women. So she got seven maidens around her. So uh, obviously uh, these Persians uh, through Cyrus and through the uh, ARs, which is uh, Cyrus, one of Cyrus' sons, grandsons, they dealing with the Most High some kind of way, or they you know they dealing with the prophets. Some somebody didn't enlighten them. Okay, so that, so this is the makeup of the kingdom. So it, it, it shouldn't surprise you that uh, the, the way everything unfolded with that. Okay, um, so now I want to go to uh, uh, who Haman is before I get into the, get into the class. So so Haman was the Agai, right? And uh, you say, well, what's the Agai? You go to um, Go to uh, Second Samuel fifteen. First Samuel fifteen, and you find out that uh, Agai was uh, uh, was uh, uh, verse thirty two was a king that was over the Amalekites when the, when the Most High sent Saul to destroy the Amalekites because of what they had done to uh, the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. They attacked them from behind. And killed uh, a bunch of the uh, Israelites during the time uh, when Israel was being uh, was uh, in the wilderness, uh, coming from the land of uh, Egypt, going to the land of Canaan. So I'm starting uh, First Samuel 15 and 32. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately, and Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said. As I swore to have made women childish, so shall thy mother be childish among women. And Samuel hewed Agai in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Rehob, and Saul went up to his house in Gilad. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. So, uh, so, so uh, y'all familiar with who Haman is? The, the recording went mute for a minute when you were reading. So what what we what did you just read? Oh, I read uh, when when Samuel had uh, Samuel uh, killed Agag because uh, Saul had kept him alive, but the Most High gave him a, him a commandment through Samuel to uh, destroy everything that was in the land of uh, uh, Amalek. But Saul Saul kept the best of the animals. And he kept the king alive. And, but so Samuel had to kill him. And so he hewed him up. He killed him with his, hewed him up with the sword and destroyed him. So my question okay, I was asking. Huh? Second Samuel 15 and what? That's first Samuel 15, uh, 32. Oh, first 32. Samuel. I'm sorry. First Samuel 15 and 32. Yeah, 30, 32 through 35. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I was asking a question. Do, do uh, you, uh, anybody familiar with uh, Haman? Yes. Okay, so 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 Haman Haman we come to find out that Haman is uh out of lineage of Agag. So my, so my thing is this: uh, this is one of the uh, things that uh been, that's been hidden. The reason why this story is not really uh uh. Uh, expounded upon like it should be. So uh, uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna give you some def- some uh, background history on Haman. It's, it's the, his name uh, his name indicates that he he's a descendant of Agag, the king of the Amalekites, a direct descendant of Agag in the 17th generation. That, that's in the, that's in the Septuagint. And then he says uh, uh, Haman. Uh, he says uh, in verse. Um, Chapter three of Esther. Chapter three of Esther, verse one says, After these things did King Aarus promote Haman, the son of Amar, Hamada the Agite, and advance him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. So so what uh, Aarus just done was he promoted uh Haman, which is a descendant of the uh, of uh, Esau. Uh, and the direct descendant of uh, Agag, 
the enemy of Israel. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't promote him above all of everybody else in uh, Babylon. And so, so Ham, the, Ham, Hamadar means the father of Haman, designated as the Agai. And then you can, you can see that in three different places in after uh, 3 verse 1. Uh, three ten and eight and five, and and it's uh, it also means given by the moon. That's a that's another uh, meaning of uh, that word. It's given by the moon, so that means that uh, he came forth at night, you know, under the moon. And I'm gonna show you why why that's so in, in a minute. So. Uh, So uh, we're gonna go to okay. Well, uh, we, we I was talking earlier about uh, how they 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 have uh, rearranged and deleted and added and did these different things to to lead you to a certain uh, mindset uh, in the Old Testament to lead you to the New Testament. So uh, I'm gonna read you what uh, was written. What is written in uh, they call it's called the uh, the uh, yeah, the uh, apocryphons, and and I'm going to read you what it says in chapter uh, uh, fifty-eight. It says this this country that was is in in the book of Esther in the Bible. It says and at that time the Lord said unto Samuel, Go and say unto Saul, and this is going to, this is going to explain how you get uh you know if you just, if you just going by. King James Bible, you can say uh, Samuel killed Agag. So how, how can Agag have any descendants if he killed him? Because I mean, how can how can Haman be Agag's descendants when Saul, when Samuel killed him? And between him and Saul, they they wiped the Malachites out. So let me read this. Uh, say this, and and this explains it because we know that Agag existed. So it says that at that time. The Lord said unto Samuel, Go and say unto Saul, Thou art sent to destroy Amalek, that the words may be fulfilled which Moses, my servant, spake, saying, I will destroy the name of Amalek out of the land, well, well by spake in, in mine anger, and forget not to destroy every soul of them as it is commanded thee. And Saul departed and fought against Amalek, and, and saved the lives of Amalek, the king of the Am Amalekites. Because he said to him, I will show thee hidden treasures. Therefore he, he spared him and saved him alive and brought him unto Armada. And God said unto Samuel, Has thou seen how the king is corrupted with money even in, in a moment, and have saved alive Agag of the Amalekites and his wife? Now therefore suffer Agag and his wife to come together this night. Remember what his name means by the moon, by the moon, and uh, let me see, let me get back where I was at, uh, by night, and tomorrow thou shalt slay him, but his wife they shall preserve till she bring forth a male child, and then she also shall be, shall die, and, and he that is born of her shall be an offense unto Saul, but thou arise on tomorrow and slay Agag, for the sins of Saul is written before my face always. And when Samuel was risen uh, to, on tomorrow, Saul came forth to meet him and said unto him, The Lord hath delivered our enemies into our hands, as he said. And Samuel said to Saul, Whom have Israel wronged? For before the time comes that the king shall rule over him, he demanded thee before a king, and thou when thou wast sent to do do the will of the Lord, has transgressed it. Uh, therefore, he that was he that was saved alive by by these shall shall die now. And these hidden treasures, well, he spake, he shall not show thee. And he that is born of him shall be an offense unto thee. And Samuel came unto Agag with a sword and slew him and returned unto his house. So we see now it was, it was a bunch of information that was left out because of. We, we see Samuel came and killed Agag, but but what what uh, Saul had did was Saul had saved Agag and his wife, and his and his, and his wife was all uh, with with child, and so 
the reason why he saved him was Agag told him that he knew where a, 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 a treasure was. Well, well, a bunch of riches and, and uh, gold and stuff was there. And so that's why Saul, being greedy, uh, saved Agag in order to, for Agag to show him where, where, those, where the treasure was at. But Samuel came and killed him and told him, hey, he ain't going to show you no treasure. But, but because of what you've done, uh, we're going we're gonna to let her have this uh, kid, and this kid going to be a fist into your house, into Israel, because of what you've done. So with that understanding, we see now how, how Haman came about. And so I, I, I don't know if you, uh, uh, if you if it, no, nobody on the line has seen the movie, but uh, with, this, with what I'm saying right here, uh, if you go and watch the movie again, you'll see all this in the movie. You know, if, it, if you are just going by the King James Bible and watch the movie, you would understand how when, when the movie first came on, how it transpired. But those people know what actually happened. So they, this was in there. When it, it, this, this scene right here was in the movie where Agag and his wife was there. And then his wife... Uh, had Haman, and she had, she escaped on a caravan or whatever, and, and ended up in Babylon. That's how Haman ended up in Babylon. Yeah, but but, but, what, but another thing I want to show you was that he said that in uh in um he's gonna be offense to Saul, right? So so Saul is out of uh if you go to Second Samuel, Saul is out of the house of Kish. Let me find. It. What's the name of the movie? Uh, One Night with the King. Okay. So we got uh, Esther 2 and 5. Esther 2 and 5. It says that now, and uh, now, in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, son of Shema, son of Kish, a Benjamite. Well, that's what Samuel is. I mean, that's what Saul is. Saul is a, a Benjamite. And Saul is out of the house of uh, Kish. Both him and Mordecai are out of the house of Kish. They're both Benjamites. So that's, you know, that's, that's something to think about. Okay. Right. And so another thing, another thing that I found out was in you know in the Septuagint was that uh, uh, Saul means uh, first of all Esther. That's a that's a captive name. Just like we just like when we know that when uh, uh, Zuba captive name was Sheshbar. And and uh, and they changed uh, Daniel's name to Belshazzar, and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego's name was changed. Esther is a captive name. Her her uh, Hebrew name is Hadasha, which is uh, Esther two and seven. It says in Esther two and seven, it says, and he brought up Hadash, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Malachi, whom Mordecai, when he when her father and her mother were dead, took her took her own daughter. So so this happened in when back in in Babylon on the other side when uh, Nebuchadnezzar daughter came in was and you know killed a bunch of people and destroyed Jerusalem. In the process, her father and mother and father was killed. So so which is uh, her father is Mordecai's. Uh, brother, so 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 what what he had done, and, and this is important. Mordecai, uh, it, it tells you the Septuagint that Mordecai had brought Esther up to be his wife. You know, that's what that's in uh, Septuagint in F, Esther uh, chapter two verse seven in the Septuagint. That's the that's the Greek version of the uh, Esther, and so. So, so that that shot, that sheds a different light on what's going on. So, so uh, he's 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 counseling her, 
and dealing with her and raising up to be his wife. So he's he school he got control, full control over her. He dealing with her, you know, and and, uh, uh, and building her. So then when the commandment came for the, for them to come get uh, Esther to go to the king's house for the king to, you know, because he's looking for a queen, then the whole thing changed. Because cause Mordecai got to submit to, uh, he got to uh, submit to the laws of the land. But what we see right here, she was, he was raised enough to be his wife. Yeah. This. That puts a whole different perspective on it. Right, 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 right. That's what I'm saying. So, uh, and then another thing I want to another thing I want to shed a light on is that uh, in in uh, in in um, first first uh, Samuel eight and um, I mean this 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 be too. I'm just I'm just setting up the setting up the uh, settings of what's what's actually going on with this uh, chapter with this book. Uh, it says First Samuel eight and uh, I'm gonna start at this one is when uh, when, when uh, Israel asked for a king. So you gotta keep in mind the people they we just come out of, they just had judges over them. So now they was coming through when they was coming out of when they was coming out of Egypt they passed through all these different countries. And they were seeing these kings with these crowns on, which was giants. You know, they wanted so they so so they the judges didn't work. Uh, when you go to chapter eight, verse one, Samuel is the ju last judge, and he got two sons. They wicked. So let me read that. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Ab Abi. They were judges in in, in Bathsheba. And his sons walked not in his way, but turned aside after his lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. So now the people, they fed up with that. So they want a king. So I'm going to start at verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Remah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in, in thy way. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But, but, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected, rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me, and said other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall remain over them. And Samuel told, told all, all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of, of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that reign over you. And, uh, he will take our sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. So, so he told them all what the king was going to do, and you know, the direction that he was going to take Israel in. But they didn't care. So when you get to chapter nine, it's uh, uh, chapter nine, verse one says, "Now there was a man, a Benjamin. See, so Mount Mordecai and Saul is from the tribe of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Ebal, the son of Zerah, son of." Barbara, son of Ephraim, a Benjamin, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man, and a goodly, and there was not none among the children of Israel as goodlier persons than he. From his shoulders and, and, and upward, he was higher than any other, other, other people. So see, he got, he got some giant in him because he, he, he taller than everybody else. But anyway, so that's why they wanted him. It chose him. The people chose him, right? So now, they not Yahweh, not not, not the Lord of Hosts. He, the people chose him. So now let's go to First Samuel sixteen. So we go to sixteen, and uh, verse one it says that 
This day. And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long he didn't reject Saul because of what Saul did with the Amalekites and what he did with Agag. It says, and the Lord said unto Samuel, how long was I mourn for Saul? Seeing that I rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill that horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me. See, the people chose Saul. That's why David the first, actually the first king. He says, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So he cho- <laughs> so so the most I chose uh, David. Chose David, and the people chose Saul. So you say, well, what are you talking about? Well, let's go to uh, Numbers. Chapter 24. Back to the prophecy of Balaam. So I'm in, I'm in 24 and uh, 14, 14 uh, through 17. So this is, Israel is in the wilderness. They're not even a nation yet. And Balaam made this prophecy uh, which to me nobody seems to know is a prophecy. So he says in verse 14, uh, it says, And now, behold, I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advise thee what the what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. It says, and he took up a, his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Peor, I have said, and the man whose eyes are open have said, he has said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High who saw the vision of the Almighty falling in a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall reign out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Shia, and Edom shall be a possession. Shia also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do violence. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. So we know that that's, that's David. So he, prom- he prophesied right here that David was coming. But because the people put pressure on Samuel, he gave them Saul. But he already had it. He already had it prophesied right here by Balaam that David was coming. Mm-hmm. See that? So, so David was already prophesied to come. So Saul did his little thing. And then he he, uh, he went wrong, and then the prophecy came to pass that was already uh, that already been uh, uh, proclaimed and ordained uh, already, and, and David came forth. So that's why you see there's a difference. The people chose Saul, but the Most High chose David. That's how you, you can see that David is his anointing, because he chose David, and uh, yeah, he, and he took he chose David, not the people. That, that's huge because I've, I've never had it explained. You know, that no one has ever contrasted the choice of the people versus the choice of the Most High. It's, it, you know, it's just been told, you know, Saul was the first king. Right, right, right. But, yeah, this is, this is a good, great understanding. Thank you. Right. So, so I, I went to First Samuel 16, MC3. Yeah, so I, I, I read... Uh, first time in 16 and 1, I'm going to read 16 and 3. This is a second witness for who David is. It says, and 3 says, and call, um, well, 2 says, Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee. So here goes the, this the completion of the prophecy in, in Numbers 24. And I and I called Jesse to the sac- and called Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me. See that, Lord, mm-hmm. talk, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom name is uh, unto thee, whom I will name unto thee. So that's that's the completion of the prophecy that Balaam had seen. Mm-hmm. Right. So he said unto me, not to Israel, to him. All right. Now can I? Uh... Ask something real quick. So you read in Numbers, Numbers 24, 14 to 19, um, but to reference that, 2 Samuel chapter 8, um, 
verses 12 to 14 shows you where David actually uh, completed the prophecy. Right. So I'm going to read that real quick. Um, at 2 Samuel chapter 8 and 12 to 14, it says, Of Syria and of Moab and of the children of Ammon and of the Philistines and of Amalek and of the spoils of Hadad, Dizah, of the sons of Rehob, king of Zobak. And David got him a name when he returned from smiting the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. And he put garrisons in Edom throughout all Edom, put he garrisons in all they of Edom became David's servant, and the Lord preserved David wheresoever he went. So that's mm-hmm. confirmation from what he read in um, Numbers 24, that, you know, they say that that's supposed to be J.C., but it's David who actually brought that to pass. Mm-hmm. Fulfilled mm-hmm. it, I should say. Fulfilled the prophecy. Mm-hmm. Right. So, 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 so another, another on that same note, dealing with uh, how how we look at things and how the most high did, how the most high look at things. If you go back to uh, uh, First Samuel uh, sixteen and seven, First Samuel sixteen and seven. So, so Samuel, uh, he told. Uh, uh, he told uh, uh, Samuel to go and anoint, go to Jesse's house. He don't know who it is. He's gonna anoint. So Samuel just went, and he, when he get there, verse seven, Samuel looking at, looking for his stats, how the man looked. So he says, mm-hmm. verse seven. But the Lord said on the, uh, no, go to six. And it came to pass when they they were come that he looked on Eli. This is the firstborn son of uh, Jesse, and said, surely the Lord appointed is before him because he was tall, strong, and all this. And then the seven says, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature. See, that's what they did with Saul. Mm-hmm. Because I have pursued him. But the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, for a man looketh on his outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on his on the heart. So mm-hmm. let's go back and look at what what he did with Samuel. You know, he told Saul. So, check First uh, Samuel nine. Now, First uh, uh, Samuel nine and one. Now there was a man, a Benjamite, whose name was Kish, Kish, son of Ebal, the son of Zerah, son of Bacharach, Bo- Bo- son of Ephli, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power, and he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man. And a, and, and a goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel a goodly person that he, for his shoulders and uh, for his shoulders and upward were higher than any other people. And okay, mm-hmm. so they looking when, they, when the people chose him, they looking at his his, at his countenance, as I would have just like Sam Saul did over there. See, mm-hmm. that ain't what the Most High looking at. Yeah, so 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 you know that's how they went wrong. Right. So is, is is Samuel okay in uh, uh, chapter nine? That's speaking of Saul, right? Right. And then in Second Samuel, First Samuel. But I'm sorry. In First Samuel, when who, who is being sent? Samuel is being sent to anoint David. Why he went to Jesse house. Okay, and you're saying that Sam, uh, Samuel is looking at the physical like they did when they chose Saul. Right, right. And, and, okay. and he, he on top of that, evidently he's not aware that uh, Balaam already made a prophecy that, you know, David was already uh, uh, for a prophesied to come. Okay, okay. He, so, so all he's doing is for, he just... He's just a he's just playing a role in the in the fulfillment of what the most high had said I already prophesied through Bane. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's something that I thought about just now when when you asked that question was, you know, when you look at it from the standpoint of a king, like Leonard was saying earlier, Israel 
wasn't didn't have kings. So the only thing that Samuel would have had to reference would be the kings that he saw from all the other nations. Right. And when you understand, you know, when you do some research, you understand all of those kings were giants. They were big right. men. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right, with crowns on their head. So Samuel was really being innocent because in his mind, you know, if, you, if you, you're not used to something, that's the image that you have in your head. Right. So he's thinking that, okay, Saul was big like the other king, so maybe he's looking for, you know, a big right. person, not understanding okay. what's really going on. So it's really innocent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, 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 that, but so, so you see now with the proper understanding that the Most High is teaching him. Mm-hmm. He's not. He, he going. He's looking at it. He's looking on our appearance, but the Most High is, which is you know, in heaven, and we know it's a book in heaven. He already know that he, David was already prophesied to come. That's why he mm-hmm. can tell him to go and check the house. Mm-hmm. So he already. Mm-hmm. Knows. But, but, but I was telling you how all these concepts. And, and, and these different ideologies that they got in the New Testament, I want to show you how they came about with the, so, so, supposedly the Holy Ghost, which we know that the Holy Ghost is a, is a, is a being, which is an angel. A spirit is a, an angel and a spirit is synonymous. So the Holy Spirit is an angel. And so we know that, we know that Michael told when he appeared on a bush and the bush didn't burn and he told Moses to draw near. You take off your shoes, got the ground that you stand on is over. So that goes your Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. And then he told mm-hmm. Joshua, the man that Joshua saw with the sword drawn, he said, he, told, he commanded Joshua to take his shoes off. Because the ground where you stand at is over. Well, that's two different places. Where Joshua was at and where Moses was at is two different places. So why is the ground holding? Because there's an angel there. That's why the ground mm-hmm. holds. Wherever he is, the ground is holding. That's your Holy Ghost. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you this ideology they got about the, the Holy Ghost falling on somebody and, and and all this stuff. So uh, can can I, can I ask a question about what you were just teaching uh, before, please? Go ahead. Okay. So just like how we just walked the scriptures, we went from the prophecy in Numbers to where the prophecy came to pass. And it it lined up with being David, right? Right. So one of the things for me that debunks Jesus is every time you have taken us through scriptures and shown us that what that whenever like how we have been taught is that certain scriptures are pointing to J C. But you have walked us through several scriptures that were supposed to point to J.C., and they either pointed to Zerubbabel or they pointed to David or whatever like that. So one of the things that debunks Jesus and should cause people to want to wrestle with who Jesus is and who he's not is that the scriptures and the prophecies Every time they don't they don't point to him. Right. Yeah. When you write the, when you write the battle, yeah. Okay. Right. So so now now I'm in Samuel, uh, uh, First Samuel chapter ten, and this, this is showing you how they came about with the Holy Ghost and and, and the, some of the characteristics of the Holy Ghost. And, I mean, you know, in, in Acts. So I'm in verse ten. This is when Samuel. Uh, told Saul, uh, sent Saul to uh, to Bethel. Say, then, the verse one, ten and one. Then Samuel took a, a remember what you know about the Holy Ghost and what happened in Acts and all that. Say, then Samuel took a veil of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, It is not because the Lord have anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance. When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by. Rachel Sepulchre in the border of uh, Benjamin at Zizah. And they will say unto thee, The ashes which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father have left the care of the ashes and the, and the sor- sorrow for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shall thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plains of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God at Bethel, one carrying three kids, 
and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of thy hand. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets, coming down from the high place, with pastry, and a tablet, and a pipe, and a harp, before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. See that? Let me read it again. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. Remember the Holy Ghost. Remember the Christian church. And let it be, these things that come upon thee, that thou shalt do as occasion, serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt do, go down before me to Gilead, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and sacrifice sacrifices or uh, peace offerings. Seven days shall thou tarry till I come to thee, and thou sh- shall show thee what thou shalt do. Uh, mm. Now watch this here. Remember, you're supposed to change. When the, when the Holy Spirit come on you, you're going to change, right? Mm-hmm. Now watch this here. Mm-hmm. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Look at this. Mm. All those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him and prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before. Look at this. All of them that knew him before saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, what is this? Come on now. That has come upon the son of Cush. Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? Huh? Do you see that? Yes. Okay, so see, that's where they, get, that's where they come from. So, this, this, you know, when they, when they started concocting all this, they had to go back to the Old Testament to get all these different ideologies and all these different things that they're doing in the Christian church. And then they put mm-hmm. it in the New Testament. And so you see the uh, Holy Ghost, suppose the Holy Ghost in full effect right here. But but not in the right. man. Not, 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 it, this is a Hebrew concept, not in the Christian way. It, it's been perverted over here in the, Christian, in, the, in the New Testament. Right, you know, because when you, when, you join, when you join the church, in the Christian church, or you walk down the aisle, as they say, and you give your hand to the preacher and your heart to Jesus, Okay, yeah. then they say the next step after that, you got to tarry. <laughs> you have right. to tarry and wait for the Holy Ghost to come because the Holy Ghost, you know, is your helper in changing your heart. Wow. Right. Wow. Right, and it's a day it is right there in full faith. Wow. Right. And so, so uh, we, see, we see that... Um, you know, I, I, you know, I, how all these people are operating. They was, they was reading out. They got once they got a hold of our records. Then, you know, that's how, that's what with the trigger they started. Uh, you know, you got one book which is the Old Testament, the Tanakh, and then you got the New Testament, uh, the Greek New Testament, and so it came about from them getting a hold of our records and then superimposing it back and forth from from the Old Testament to and, and creating the New Testament. So that's what you mean when you say the wicked scribes. Right. That's what I mean. It's the, it's the, the people that got old our records and started reading them. Uh, just like when the Most High looked down from heaven at Israel, he see one man. And so why is it? Because of Jacob. The 12 boys came out of Jacob. So when he see Israel, he said he, he see Jacob. That's why he says, Israel, my servant, Jacob. But Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Well, when I say wicked scribes, these Edomites. You're saying one man is Esau. They all came from Esau. Okay. So when they, when, they, when, they, when they finally got the opportunity uh, after what happened to us in, when the anti Epiphany came, they received our records. They, had, they got uh, access to our records, and they started reading them. And we know that Esau and his kind don't give two, two uh, opinions about the most high word. So, so they use this word to, to better themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, so that's what they did. They don't, want, they don't want to deal with the God in the Old Testament because the God in the Old Testament 
say that he hates Esau. So they don't want to deal with him. Mm. So, so they use the concept and the ideology of the Old Testament and superimpose them on the, on the, on the God that they created at the Council of Nelsia. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, so what you talking about? Well, the, the person that was in charge, uh, the, the person that, that was oh, the overseer at the Council of Nelsia was Ebus. Well, Ebus is from Caesarea. Herod the Great built, uh, Herod the Great built uh, Caesarea. It's an Edomite city. Mm. Herod, Herod an Edomite, Ebus an Edomite, and Caesarea is an Edomite town. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't say any more. Now, I wanted to add something to that, and I know you probably heard me say this before, and it's probably going to come up again, but this is why it's so imperative for us to understand what happened in Genesis with, with what, what the Lord said to Eve and, and to, to the serpent and what happened uh, with Jacob and Esau because Christianity has us chasing after this red person with horns on their head and a pitchfork, and everything is the devil, the devil, the devil. Mm-hmm. And, but what Leonard just told you is it's not about the devil. It's about his seed. So he told Eve in the garden, your seed and her seed. It's going to be at enmity. Mm-hmm. And he told uh, 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 Jacob's mom that it's two manner of people, two nations are in your womb. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's the only thing that's going on right now is Jacob and Esau. Mm. Only two sides. So when you, I'm, trying, I'm trying to say basically where Jacob, once you understand the nation, the people, the okay. son, is Jacob. The other son is Esau. And so who's in charge? Esau. So we're not fighting against a devil, a man with a pitchfork running around and, 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 and you know, so much uh, uh, spirit, but it's, it, it's more of the, the wicked seed that's there. So they have the okay. money. They, mm-hmm. they pass all the laws. They're the ones that's subjugating us. They're the ones that's uh, messing with the weather and the food and all that stuff. It's it's a wicked lineage. And so because we didn't understand what was going on, we run around talking about the devil, the devil, the devil, but it's not the devil. It's seed. You see what okay, I'm saying? Okay. So, yeah, and so, so as I listen to your explanation, um, it kind of sheds light on what you were saying to my previous question about prayer. It's right. just like uh, I'm, you know, Perhaps prayer, perhaps the things that I see in the physical causes me to want to pray. And you're saying, it, you know, okay, so prayer is oftentimes associated with wanting protection from the devil. Right. <laughs> okay. And you're saying it ain't no devil. <laughs> it ain't no devil. It, it's, okay. I mean, he, he existed. He exists, but not from this grand perspective right. like, I was thinking, you know, he's in North Carolina, he's in Louisiana, he's in Texas, mm-hmm. he's in Europe. Mm-hmm. He's in, come on, man. No, it's his children. They're all over the mm-hmm. world. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's what we're dealing with today. It's a wicked generation. And so that's the deception of Christianity. Mm-hmm. That's the major reason why it was created. They wrote themselves out of the scripture. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mhm. That right. makes sense. Mhm. And then you saying that um, what you were saying, Leonard, is that the wicked scribe took the ideology of what Jacob was familiar with, or what Jacob was accustomed to, right? And they 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 perverted it and presented it back to us. Um, and for us to follow that is to is to follow Esau as opposed to who we are, Jacob, right? Right. With their God that they created at the council of Nelson. Okay. 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 And 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 their God is like a parallel with the Most High. Right. And that that's the reason why we we've been misled and and in total confusion up until this point. 
Mm-hmm. But, but but we know that the Most High, he he got his he has a timing, and the timing has come to to the, he said that he was gonna help us. Like I said, in Isaiah forty four one through five, he we at the point now he's pouring the spirit out on 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 the uh, children of uh, Israel, the remnant, and they waking up to to uh, to these to this host and to these to these wicked ideologies that they've imposed on us. And so mm-hmm. so with that. Being said, I want to I'm, I'm, I want to deal with the the uh, the uh, in closing the fact that uh, just just like with uh, just like the Lord of Hosts used Mordecai and Esther and Aarus to deliver Israel, then he delivered them from uh, uh, Babylon and from the Medes and Persians. Uh, he's gonna do the same thing uh, again. So I want to show you what the I reason I say that this this is the book of Mordecai. So if you go to after chapter eight, and uh, I'm gonna start at verse uh, at, at verse uh, nine, and I'm and, and I'm gonna show you how what you know the whole purpose of Mordecai it says. Then where the kings they they, they whatever where we at is that they them uh, they getting ready to do away with Haman. You know Haman had, had, had set set the Israelites up to be destroyed. But he was exposed. So verse nine. Then were the king scribes called at that time in the third month, that is in the month of Stephen, on the three and twentieth day of thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded. See, so what had happened is he didn't he didn't raise Mordecai up to second in command behind Ars, just like he did with Daniel in Babylon, and just like he did with Joseph in uh in uh, Egypt. So he says. Right. It, and it was written according to all of that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and the deputies and the rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia, 120 and seven provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. And he wrote in the king's A.R.'s name and sealed it with the king's ring and sent letters by post on horsemen and riders on mules and camels and young uh, drummeries, wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in, in every city, to gather themselves together and to stand for their life, to, to destroy and to slay and to cause and to perish all the powers of the people and the providence that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the soul, the spoils of them for prey. Upon one day, all the providences uh, of King Aris, namely upon the 13th day, of the twentieth month, which is is the, is the month of Adar, the copy of the copy of the writings for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the posts that rode upon the mules and the camels went out, be hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment, and the decree was given at Shushan the palace. Now here we go, and Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in a royal palace of blue and white and with great crown of gold and with garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every providence and in every city, whatsoever the king commanded and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness and feast and a good day. And many other people of the land became Jews for the field for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. So uh, so uh, Hebrews, everybody out there in Hebrew land, he said in, in, in 15, verse 15, and Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal power of blue and white and with great crown, great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple uh, and, and the city of Shushan rejoiced with, uh, with, uh, and was glad. 16, the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. Well, let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. Because that's what we're looking for now. We're looking for, he, he's shining a light on what the light is. So if you go to Isaiah 60, which hasn't happened yet, and you go to verse, I'm going to start at verse 1. So we're going to see what this light is that he's talking about in 60. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. 
and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Mm. To the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they that gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be shall shall nurse upon thy side. So we see that this life in Malachi in Esther was Mordecai. Mm -hmm. so who's the life here? In, in Isaiah chapter sixty. Go to Isaiah chapter eleven. Mm. Verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root out of Jesse, which shall stand for inside of the people. To it shall the Gentiles see, and his rest shall be glorious. It's none other than David, son of mm. Jesse. And mm. so, so now we see the light. Is a, a light been shined on the light. Okay? Wow. Wow, that's amazing. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Line upon line and precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and you find the truth. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So, wow. uh, okay, so uh, any comments? So we looking for David. That's it. That's the light. for David. That's the light. Mark, we, we see that Mark out with the light back then. And then we see that he used uh, Zerubbabel. Let, let me read that right quick. In uh, Haggai. What, what, what book did you say? Haggai. Okay. Mm -hmm. Haggai. Haggai chapter 2. Okay. Hold let me on. start at uh, 20. I'm going to 23. And again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak unto Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the thrones of, of the kingdom, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots, and those that ride in them, and the horses and the riders shall come down every day, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, said the Lord Host, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shaphat, said the Lord, and I will make thee a city, huh, a light, for I have chosen thee, said the Lord of hosts. Huh? Mm. Wow. Okay. Amazing. So, 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 uh, anybody got any comments on that? If not, we're going to Q&A. Yeah, I got something I want to read. Um, while you was talking about the Holy Spirit and talking about, uh, you know, what they got from the Old Testament and how they spun it in the New Testament. Well, I was reading in the book of Jasher the other day, and I found something that was pretty interesting that coincides with Ezekiel chapter 7. And so, you know, we teach that Ezekiel um, 37 the Valley of Dry Bones is a literal resurrection of our forefathers. And Ezekiel 36 talks about, um, you know, it's a future event. It's something that, that's going to happen. You know, the, the Jews over there claim that this happened when they were able to go back into their land and become a nation and all that stuff. Um, but we know based upon our understanding that it's not. So I'm going to read uh, Jubilees chapter 1, verse 23. And it says, um, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to start at uh, 21. I'm going to read 21 uh, to 23. It says, but they are thy people and thy inheritance, which thou have delivered with, the great, with thy great power from the hand of the Egyptians, creating them a clean heart, and in Holy Spirit, and let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth until eternity. So this is Moses praying to, to the Lord because the Lord tell, is telling him um, that he's going to, you know, send Jacob into, and the Israelites into captivity. He's going to destroy them as a nation. So now Moses is praying to him and saying, please don't do this. So he said, create in them a clean heart and a Holy Spirit. And let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth until eternity. And the Lord said unto Moses, I know their contrariness and their thoughts and their stiff necks. 
that they will not be obedient till they confess their own sin and the sin of their fathers. And after this, they will turn to me in all uprightness and with all their heart and with all their soul, and I shall circumcise the foreskin of their hearts and the foreskin of the heart of their seed. And I shall create in them a Holy Spirit, the same thing he just asked the Lord to do. But he's telling them, I can't, I'm not going to do it right now. It's for a future time. And he said, and I shall cleanse them so that they shall not turn away from me from that day until eternity. So he's telling them, they're going into captivity. He said, these people that are, that are, that are, that, that are with you right now are wicked. There's a wicked generation. But in a later time, I'm going to create in them a Holy Spirit, and I'm going to uh, cleanse them, and I'm going to, they're going to be with me for eternity. So now I want to go to Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm going to read 23 to 27. And it says, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profane amongst the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord, which I have when I shall sanctify you before their eyes. For I will take you from amongst the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the song the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So this is totally contrary to Acts chapter, to, to Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came and the, the, the understanding of what the Holy Spirit is and all the things that the Holy Spirit is supposed to do when you're jumping around and you're speaking in tongues and all of that is totally contrary. Because he just, he just told us that he's going to gather us from all of the nations onto himself, and he's going to pour, put a Holy Spirit in us and, and clean us up. So whatever this thing is that's talking about in the New Testament, it is contrary to what he told Moses on the mountain in the future and what he told, what we just read in Ezekiel 36. So I just kind of wanted to point that out, uh, those references. Okay, question. Um, so is the understanding that what we call a prayer language or speaking in an unknown language, are you saying that that's not a part of the life of a Hebrew Israelite? Well, unknown, the unknown language is Hebrew. Well, that's exactly so. So, yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, be, um, yeah. So. And uh, according to that's the, what we as, what we said right now as a people is we know that the Most High took our language away. So, so, so the Hebrew language is not a not a point of it. It's because uh, he said that when he left, he tore the temple down and he took the language up, up with him. And then Jeff now tells you that when he returns, he's going to return a pure language to us, the seed, when he comes back. That's another part of our dilemma today is that our language has been taken away. Okay, I have a little problem with that. So what, what if what the... Christian church calls speaking in tongues is actually speaking in the Hebrew language. So you're saying the Most High has not released to anyone the ability to speak to him in their original tongue? What, what language of Hebrew you're saying? Yes, yes. Uh, that that what what people have been running around saying, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, is actually the Hebrew. It's it, it, it's the Hebrew language. Well, so, okay. So, so let, I'm gonna let I, you. I'm gonna let you answer that question. So if we, if everything we talked about from the standpoint of, and this is, I'm just, this is how I think as a person. 
a lot of times. I, I Sometimes I answer my own question based upon the stuff that I know. So if we understand that Christianity is wicked, we understand that what happened in the books, book of Acts is a farce, and we understand the people that was in the land at that time were not Israelites because they were on the west coast of Africa. So if you keep it in, in the premise of understanding that all of that is wickedness, mm-hmm. then how can then, then then how can it be Hebrew? How can it be anything other than wickedness? So you got to throw the, you got to throw the whole concept away. Everything that you understand from that concept uh, uh, has to be thrown in the trash and buried. Go in the backyard, put in the bag. Go in the backyard, dig a hole, put the bag in there, throw the dirt on top of it, and pat it down. Well, um, I have not. I am not. Uh... I speak in tongues. I speak in, in what I believe to be a Hebrew language that that the Most High have given to me. And the, the answer, the response to your question of, you know, everything is, we, we, we know that everything is wicked and that we got to throw it all away. I don't think we can do that because time and time again in the scriptures, we have seen the Most High bring his plan out of chaos. The Most High has created the chaos. The Most High has created the perversion. The Most High called Cyrus, uh, called uh, Artaxerxes out of Cyrus, but he had a plan for Artaxerxes. So when it comes to uh, the wickedness and the pervertedness that is on this land, when it comes to this religion and this false Jesus, the Most High is in charge of it all. And so I believe that just as the Most High can bring David up in the midst of a wicked Saul, Saul, in, you know, in the midst of, 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 of these giant people that were kings that led us astray, the Most High has a plan in the midst of the wickedness and the perversion. So when he, when, when he opens our understanding to some things about the pervertedness, I don't think that it calls for us to throw it all away. I think it calls for us to continue to excavate and see what among the wickedness and the perversionness is the most high. So when, it comes to, when it comes to prayer and praying in, in what I call uh, a prayer tongue or my, my, my understanding of it has always been that it was not something that was uh, – that was strange or something that was an un- uh, unknown tongue. It, it might be unknown to man, but it's not unknown to the most high. So I am not in agreement with the fact that the most high has not released unto those people that he chooses to a, a language, the, the, the Hebrew language. If, if the Hebrew language is my original language, then it's something that is already in me. But it's the, my, my understanding of who the Most High is is what brings it forth. And I say that to say this, um, guys, in, in a lot of churches, one of the ways that they bring forth this thing called unknown tongues is they, they, they ask the people in the church, they say, okay, everybody who wants to be blessed with their with, with, with they unknown language today, stay out the church, and we're going to have a session on that. And what they do is one person stands in the middle and say, yabba, dabba, 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 and then everybody starts saying, yabba, dabba, dabba, dabba. Well, that's not the way I got my, my prayer lung, my, my prayer tongue, my prayer language, what I believe is my original language. That's not the way I got it. I got it in the secret place alone with the Father. I got it in a secret place apart from any, any type of class to learn how to say yabba dabba do. Okay, so my, 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 my point and my plea and my cry is that we do not throw the baby out with the bath water, but that we have to, we have to, you know, just like you guys are already doing, we have to continue to seek and excavate and dig through where the most high might be in the midst of the evilness and the wickedness, as you guys have, have just showed us today. And all, the, all this stuff that was going on, Haman, 
Haman in the, in the kingdom of Artaxerxes wanting to destroy the Jews, but the Most High in the midst of that had a plan. Right. So, yeah. Now, so, so of course, everybody is entitled to, you know, what they, what, what they want to believe. And so our, our job here is just to teach what we believe, what we think is going on. And, you know, that's between you and the Most High. Um, I want to read something to you, though, from on the, on the aspect of that. So you, you're saying that, um, you know, you believe that he gave you the language and you believe, you know, that's something that you're going to hold on to. So I'm going to read something I to you. I believe it to be Hebrew. I, I okay. believe it to be, I, I believe it to be the, the, the Hebrew language. Okay, okay I'm listening. So the book of Jubilees, Jubilees chapter 12. Okay, uh, I don't have that book. Okay, uh, I'll read it. Um, Jubilees chapter 12, verse 24 um, to 28. Okay. Says, um, so um, Moses was just, was just praying, and then this is what happens after he prayed. So it says, and I shall be a God to thee and thy son, and to thy son's son, and to all thy seed. Fear not, from henceforth unto all the generation of the earth, I am thy God. And the Lord God said, Open his mouth and his ears, that he may hear and speak with his mouth, with the language which he hath revealed, for it had been ceased from the mouths of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow at the Tower of Babel. And I'm sure you know the, the story of what happened mm-hmm. at the Tower of Babel. So mm-hmm. the Hebrew language has been taken away from everybody. So now the Lord's specifically saying to, Ab- to the angel to open up Abraham's mouth and his ears. And here's why it says, And he took the books of his fathers, and these were written in Hebrew, and he transcribed them, and he began from henceforth to study them. And I made known to him that which he could not understand. And he studied them during the sixty rainy months. And it came to pass in the seventh year of the sixth week that he spoke to his father and informed him that he would leave Haram to go into a land of Canaan to see and to see it and return to him. So here we see that there's nobody on the earth that's speaking Hebrew and the angel for this particular purpose open Abraham's eyes and his ears so that he can read the Hebrew writings of the books that he found of his fathers. And so the statement I made earlier was that when we understand that the Greek New Testament is not, was never written in Hebrew, so it's not the, the, the writings of our forefathers. And so and this, I'm just telling you from, from, from what we believe and from our understanding so if you understand that the Greek New Testament has nothing to do with the Hebrew Israelites, then the teachings of speaking in tongues and certain things like that is, has nothing to do with our forefathers. So we see right here the angel is specifically dealing with our forefathers. And we know that all through the Old Testament we see angels were dealing with our forefathers. And the angels so specifically... You- Go ahead. I'm sorry. So are you saying that angels are not dealing with us today? Are not you in saying the, that, not in the capacity actually, that not in the capacity that they dealt with us in the past? Says who? Says the curses. Says the fact that he pulled himself away from us and he gave us over to the Gentiles. Says the fact that we've, all, been, we've been dealing with Christianity for the last fifteen, two hundred, twenty five hundred years. And in the midst of Christianity, mm-hmm. the Most High has the ability and the, and the power to show up. Absolutely. There's always, there, there's always evidence that in the midst of man, what man calls his power and his ability to create systems that he thinks is leading God's people astray, the Most High at any time he chooses we have found in Scripture even today that he shows up. So actually what you just read to me, to me, it, it, it confirms exactly what I'm saying. Here is Moses. But Moses is Abraham. reading a Hebrew. He, he opened right, right, up right. I understand. a Hebrew book. 
The New Testament I understand. is not Hebrew. I understand. Here is Moses not understanding something. And the angel, an angel is sent to him to do what? Open up his mouth. So what I'm saying to you is in the midst of my devotion to Christianity and in the midst of my devotion to this fake person called Jesus, the Most High did not allow me to attend a class and learn how to say yabba dabba do, but the Most High in my quiet time, in my prayer room, away from the class of yabba dabba do, gave me a language that I do not believe has anything to do with the Greek Testament, Jesus, and no one else except the Most High. And the verse that you have just read to me, and I'm going to have to get this book of Jubilee, what you have just read to me further validates my point that the Most High can send an angel or he can release in the midst of what we don't understand, he can release and begin to prepare a person for an assignment that has all to do with him in the midst of all of this wickedness and all this pervertedness of Christianity. Okay? So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want it to become a back and forth between me and you, and I appreciate your sharing the scriptures and everything, but I'm, I'm, I'm you know, as we go forth and as people come to this line and as people come to the light, and we now know what the light is, the Most High has prepared individuals and people, just like he prepared you and Leonard to excavate these scriptures and bring us more and more into the knowledge and into the light. He also has, you know, people that he, he, he just shows up in the midst of chaos, and we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, it's it is my point. And I have to, and, and again, um, I cannot uh, testify or witness to anyone, just like the gentleman yesterday when I met in the res- restaurant, I immediately called Leonard because I'm still excavating myself and how I can, um, you know, walk in this new understanding of who I am as a Hebrew Israelite woman. Um, So that's, you know, that's why I'm trying to ask questions, trying to understand. But over and again, asking questions and understanding, I'm also seeking the most high. And the most high, uh, I'm hoping from my, my, uh, my asking of these questions today, and he's going to begin to, to open up scripture, and you've already started with one in the book of Jubilee. You know, so I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that we can say throw everything away and bury it because okay, then so that now, says, because we're Because we're, this is being recorded, I'm going to make this okay. statement. And I'm, like I said before, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But for this show and for what we're teaching – we are saying that the Greek New Testament was never written in Hebrew, and we don't subscribe to any of the teachings and the understanding of the Greek New Testament. For and this, I'm saying to do that, if you say that, then you are limiting the power of the Most High. Well, I'm just telling you that's, that that's what we believe in for this show and what we're teaching that's what we believe in. But you're, everybody's entitled to believe whatever they want. But for, for this purpose of this show, that's what we believe. Is everybody welcome to the table on this of show? Course. Yes, everybody's okay. welcome. So, 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 so all of us are continuing to excavate the scriptures and study the scriptures. So I don't think that we can make a blanket statement unless we can say, that we have studied every scripture and the Most High has given us all of the knowledge of the questions that participants will bring to this line, okay? So we understand what you guys believe and what you guys are propagating, but you shouldn't stand firm on something that you are continuing to research. Well, what's happening is 
we are uh, just like uh, in Ezekiel when the Most High raised the bones up. He said, "Bone to his bone." Well, we bury them one bone at a time. That's right. What we're doing. Okay. When we, when we understand a specific thing and we've got to the bottom of it, we bury that bone. So we bury them one one bone at a time. Well, I I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that doesn't have the understanding that um, the Most High has the ability to open the mouth and give the Hebrew language to whomever he chooses, whenever he chooses. And I have not been shown in Scripture where that is impossible for the Most High to do. So to tell me to throw away everything that has become a part of my spirituality without walking me line upon line and precept upon precept, I don't think that that's something that we should do until that time. Yeah, thank you for yeah. the scripture that yeah. you did. Yeah. We, just, we just continue to learn. Right. Well, see, if you go, if you look at uh, Zephaniah, which is a, uh, which is a, it's, it's, you know, you got to consider it. Is uh, three and nine. It says, uh, "This is." Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me let me go there. Let me get there. Okay, Zephaniah three and nine. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go to eight. It says, therefore, wait upon the Lord. Wait upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I raise up to the prey, for the determination is to gather the nation, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour out, pour out upon them the indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So he's going to do that first. Then 9 says, then will I turn to the people a pure language, that's the Hebrew language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one of consent for, be, for beyond, the, yeah. So, so, what, so our dilemma today is the reason why we can't never come together is this. It's when he do this, when he, put, when he poured his language, returned his language that he took, when he returned it is when we're going to be unified. But he has to judge the nations first. Right. So that's something to consider. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Z. Yes, well, we appreciate it. This was fun. Good lesson. Uh, great questions. And as always, like you said, everybody's welcome. You know, I don't want to make this, you know, anybody feel like they're not welcome. And, but I had to say that because we're still recording. So, uh, shalom, everybody. Have a good one, and we'll see you uh, on Wednesday.